Headline news most affecting Chilliwack this week. It's decided and the winner is Mark Strahl in Chilliwack and Justin Trudeau in Canada. Is UFE being used for money laundering? Louis de Jagger elevated to the role of president of the Chilliwack Métis Association. IHIT takes over the investigation of a downtown Chilliwack shooting. Thanks for watching. We're committed to providing local news and news that impacts our local audience from Harrison to Garrison, Greendale to Hope, and everywhere in between, including Fairfield Island, Little Mountain, Promontory, the Eastern Hillsides, Chilliwack Mountain, Yarrow, and Cultus Lake. In addition to news, sports, and weather, we're welcoming Katie McKay from What's on Chilliwack Magazine, not only as our guest anchor today, but also in, in an interview with Barris Carden. All right, Chilliwack, let's get started. The dust has settled after Monday's federal election, which saw a minority liberal government return to Ottawa with Prime Minister Justin Trudeau keeping his job. In Chilliwack, Hope incumbent MP Mark Strahl was also re-elected. The Conservatives finished the night with just under half the popular vote in the riding, 26,477. That translates to 49.7% of the voters who cast a ballot. And for the second straight term, Strahl won the seat, but the Conservative Party whip will remain in opposition. The Liberal candidate Kelly Valonis was second with 20% of the vote. The New Democrat parachute candidate Heather McQuillan finished the night with 16.6% of the vote. It is the third consecutive win in the riding for Strahl. Chill TV provided election night coverage on Monday with Barry Penner and Clint Hames hosting the show and panel guests Diane Jansen, John Less and Willow Reeshelt and we'd like to thank them and recognize them for their contribution. I was also part of that show and it was a great night. Let's look at some of the highlights. I'm Don Lane in the Chill TV News Anchor Desk. It is turning into an interesting evening as we are going to have a liberal minority government. The Liberals leading or elected in 155 seats, 33.8% of the popular vote. The Conservatives are at 119, the Bloc with 35 votes, the NDP with 24. A lot of people thought they might get into Jack Layton territory. That's not Telling going to people happen. for months that just watch, the NDP will do much better than projected. Because I've seen it time and time again that when a party enters the election campaign as the underdog, very often they come on strong. And it's the people that go into the campaign ahead that sometimes fall short. Yeah, I think the other story is um, in that same analogy that they were talking about, they, you know, they projected that the Greens were just going to take over the Correct. NDP. Correct. And uh, I, I think um, the performance of the Greens is probably stronger at the front, but I think sort of fizzled but right now to have a larger share of the popular vote but significantly fewer seats and this is something that does periodically happen in our parliamentary system supporting his government unless the trudeau government would stop the construction on that new pipeline you think it would john uh, go to uh, a confidence vote is that what you would think here if there's a liberal minority they try to make the pipeline happen um, well something as contentious as the pipeline has been peter morgan pipeline uh, is bound to one way or another find its way into a confidence. Is that going to be an issue for the NDP? Well, the NDP is back to where they were in the 1980s yeah. uh, and 1990s. Um, you know, 25, 26, 27 seats maybe tonight when it's all said and done. That's where they historically were prior to the big Jack Layton breakthrough. Well, rather than social assistance programs and that. And I, I hope we get to a point where we can have a discussion about poverty in our country because I think it's... Uh, when you even look in Chilliwack and you see the desperate yeah. straits of people, and, and this is pretty livable community from a, an expense perspective, and yet so many people living well, at the edges of poverty. Interesting, because the guaranteed annual income isn't just a left-wing thing anymore. There are actually people on both sides Economist, talking about yeah. it because because mm -hmm. we are actually shockingly at a point where we're going to be losing tons of jobs, and not just like it used to be automation got rid of like yeah. menial jobs, right? But we're starting to lose like accountants because everyone can do their taxes on. I actually thought even though a lot of people were criticizing her for running in a town she's not from, I thought, you know, to devote that many weeks of your life when you've got a new mm -hmm. baby <laughs> to like campaigning in a town just because you believe in the in yeah. the system is actually quite commendable. Um, 
I, I like uh, Dorothy Jean O'Donnell from the <laughs> Marxist Leninist. Wow, she's very smart. I love listening to her. I mean, yeah. obviously, she's not, she, even she herself is like, well, I'm not going to win, but. Well, um, she's very committed and yeah. she's been there. <laughs> As long as I can remember, she throws her hat in and yeah. And, uh, and Arthur Green, I thought he did really well as well. I, I went to a three, at least three of the debates. Maybe Give you more. an interesting number again. We've been keeping an eye on a popular vote and who has voted. Uh, the Conservatives so far, according to Elections Canada, with 3.7 million votes. The Liberals with 3.6 million, but it's the Liberals that will, along with the New Democrats, uh, form a minority government. The NDP, by the way, with 1.6 million votes so far this evening. Uh, we are looking at Mark Straw with a very comfortable lead as uh, far as Chilliwack Hope with 5,400 votes. And uh, right behind is the Liberal Kelly Valonis at 2,400 and, or 2,492 votes. To see the full election coverage, go to chilltv.ca. Back in March, a former Mountie, Peter Germain, was tasked to put together a report on the BC money laundering scandal. The first targeted casinos and real estate, and the second took a look at post-secondary institutions. From that second report, the province recommended that universities ban large cash payments and review their policies. Last week, UFE did just that. Dave Pinton, UFE's Director of Communications, stressed that there was no indication that more than a dozen cash payments of over $10,000 were received by UFE in the last fiscal year and could have been connected to money laundering. Such payments will not be accepted starting in the next school year. Last Saturday, the Chilliwack Métis Association elected their new Board of Governors for 2019 to 2020. Louis de Jagger was promoted from Vice President to the President's Chair. Peter Lang was elected Vice President. De Jagger was to have been the federal Liberal candidate for this past federal election, but he dropped out of the race after the SNC-Lavalin scandal that rocked the federal Liberals. Kent Council approved several recommendations to help improve parking in the downtown core as requested by the merchants, including adding more signage, indicating limited parking times, clearly identifying public parking spaces, and supporting an education and awareness campaign for patrons and business staff. Public parking signs will be erected beside Shoppers Drug Mart at Agassi Harrison Museum, at the Post Office parking lot, and across from Mountain Sushi. Two-hour parking signs will be installed on the west side of the district's Pioneer Avenue lot in front of the bakery and salon buildings. The Harrison, Agassiz Harrison Museum parking lot will be receiving two electric vehicle chargers in the near future. One year after Canada's legalization of non-medical cannabis, BC's government claims there's headway in implementing a framework for a legal cannabis industry in keeping with the province's goals that prioritize public health and safety. Now, in the past year, the province has processed close to 300 applications for new retail stores and referred them to local governments and Indigenous nations. In Chilliwack, the only legal pot stores are on First Nations land. New rules for cannabis edibles have now gone into effect, but, and there's always a but, Health Canada has to approve them on a case-by-case -case basis, and that could take at least 60 days to approve. So, that means you won't see any gummy bears and cookies at the pot store until January. Chilliwack City Council is developing the 2020 and 2029 financial plan and wants your input and feedback. While creating the city's financial plan, council must balance and prioritize the needs of the city with reasonable property taxes. Your response will provide council with input on which services are most important for financial planning considerations. This questionnaire can be completed up until November 15th and can be found on the City of Chilliwack website. The colors are turning, the leaves are falling, and the piles of dead leaves are growing. During the fall and winter seasons, the city of Chilliwack is asking residents to assist city crews by clearing the leaves away from street drains in front of their homes, as well as, dare we say it, snow and ice during the winter. The program is called Adopt a Catch Basin, and the details are on the City of Chilliwack website. IHIT has taken control of a shooting investigation. Shots were fired early Tuesday morning outside of the Wash World Car Wash and Laundry in downtown Chilliwack. A 27-year-old man, who is known to police, is on life support and is not expected to survive. IHIT and RCMP are calling this a possible gang and drug-related shooting. So far, no arrests have been made. And when we return, Don with a Chill TV sports report. Come ride with me on my 
Palomino, my amigo, I'll take you where I go. In all of our days still to come, we will ride out to the calling horizon. You can just close your eyes when the light is too bright to behold. The BC Football Conference playoffs start this weekend. The 2-8 and eight Valley Huskers were out of contention weeks ago. The undefeated Langley Rams will start their quest for the Cullen Cup this weekend against the Okanagan Sun. The other semifinal will see the West Shore Rebels taking on the Vancouver Island Raiders. UFE soccer teams are going into two different directions. The men's team failed to make the playoffs, but the women's team, they're at Trinity Western. And that game, originally scheduled for tonight, now will be on Friday night. Professional bull riding took over the Abbotsford Center last weekend. Garrett Green from Meeting Creek, Alberta went a flawless two for two to win his career first PBR Canada Monster Energy Tour event. His flawless performance earned him a check for $6,400 in addition to 530 Canadian points and 170 world points. And now Barris Carden of Chill TV and his interview with Katie McKay. All right. Thank you so much, Dawn. And uh, welcome to the show, Katie McKay of Hello. What's On Magazine. Okay. Now, before we get into What's On Magazine, how are you enjoying being a uh, co-anchor on the show? I'm loving it. Absolutely loving you're it. You're doing it's a so fantastic job. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you've never done it before, right? <laughs> no, I haven't. Well, and that's a message to everyone out there. If you are interested in being uh, a co-anchor on the show, please send us a note to news at chilltv.ca. So let's get into What's On Magazine. Yeah. What up? What is what? What's On Magazine? Not What uh, Up, Chilliwack. What's On. <laughs> yeah, it's not What Up, it's, it's, it's What's On Chilliwack. Yeah. <laughs> so What's On Chilliwack ma Magazine, tell us a little bit about your magazine. Yeah, so it's a uh, local magazine and it's focused on events that are coming out in the next couple of months and there's activities for it in the kids but it focuses on the community and what's going on in the city and it has advertisers in it locally just to bring the community together so what sorts of because uh, I've, I've seen your magazine it's, it's lots. everywhere it's what, what what's what sort of uh, um, uh, cover stories do you normally do um, bigger events that are happening for sure. We also like to have like nonprofits on the front too, just to bring in again the community and whatever's going on within the city. We've got lists of different events, and then there's others that people can advertise for. Because I've seen TEDx on there. Yeah. Uh, I know that you do a, a summer Cultus Lake thing, Cultus and Lake. Uh, we're yeah. clipping the coupons. It's it's <laughs> it's good stuff. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so uh, what what made you sort of um, decide to get into being uh, a magazine? Uh, Entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. I've always been an entrepreneur. I've. I've well, uh, yeah, you strike me as that. I, yeah. So I actually I run four businesses. Wow. And it all has to do with visibility and marketing and getting yourself out there in a unique way, um, and really showing showing up to your community. For so long, I kind of hid behind the scenes because I didn't think that I needed to be out there, and my business was not doing well because of that. So I recognized the value of going out, showing up, being out there, and how your business works. Well, it's so funny you should say that because uh, you strike me as the opposite. Uh, so I can't imagine you just sort of <laughs> sitting uh, at home behind your desk not uh, not getting out there. Yeah. So now, uh, uh, Chewy uh, Media, is Chewy that, uh, uh, tell us a little bit about that. You, you mentioned it before, that's the umbrella? Is yeah, that, so that is a web, we focus on website design and development, digital marketing, right. um, the strategies behind it. And I found that for so long, you know, we do amazing websites that we're very proud of but we wanted to get people to come to it mm -hmm. you know like how good is a website if nobody's seeing it mm -hmm. so that's when we brought in SEO getting found on Google and I was like oh okay there's also more marketing avenues and I found that a magazine is another avenue to get people into your business it's all marketing and yeah. uh, you know people uh, take uh, information in from different sources so yes. I think I think you're right on there yeah. now you're a mom yeah. but you're also business mom of the year yeah. tell us about that yeah no in the beginning of in January so for uh, woman of worth I won 2019 business mom of the year wow fantastic congratulations all right two little ones Two like little two ones, little and, ones you and you still managed to uh, run uh, uh, Chewy Media yeah. and uh, and a magazine now. 
Um, if we're to, to wrap everything up in a nice little bow, if there was a, a, something that you could tell Chilliwack uh, in terms of marketing, yeah. what is your message for how to market in the Chilliwack market? In the Chilliwack area, showing up in your community, going to different events. I think that social media is powerful in terms of connecting with other business owners. Um, I'm doing a big segment um, re or soon on not um, worrying about competition mm -hmm. and actually collaborating with the people that are in your community, going up and introducing yourselves. There's, there's a, it goes a long way yeah. in yeah. showing up, hey, I, I'm here. I, I, think, I think you're right. I mean, um, you got to do all the other things. You need to do the social media piece. Yeah. Uh, but uh, there's nothing that replaces actually getting out there and connecting with people and well, building your network. I actually own a business network as well. That's one of my... Okay, we're going to have to save that <laughs> for another time. There's power in networking. There's power You do everything, in, Katie. It's all visibility. It's all getting out there, but there is power in networking and getting to know the people in your community and how you can build each other up and support each other. Katie, thank you so much for being on, sh on the show. Thank, thank you for being a part of Chill yeah. TV News today. Thank you. And uh, we're going to go to a commercial. Thanks. Hello, welcome to Small Talk. Chill TV weather. After a week's worth of rain, we're catching a break. Mainly sunny skies, at least for the next few days, and highs around 12. We'd like to thank our very special guest this week, Katie McKay, our guest anchor, and a uh, great interview with Barris Carden today, by the way. Uh, Katie, tell us a little bit about yourself. You've been in town just a few years now? Yeah, we moved here from Langley just after my daughter was born. Okay, big change from Langley to Chilliwack? Big change. I grew up in Abbotsford, though, so it did feel more like home, so I was happy right away. Yeah, okay, you are a valley girl. <laughs> yeah. If you'd like to uh, share the spotlight, even if you've never been on camera before, send us a note to news at chilltv.ca with your CV, and if you have it, links to your video. And if there's something in Chilliwack in the eastern Fraser Valley you feel we should be reporting on, again, send us an email to the same address, news at chilltv.ca. That's the news this week. I'm Don Lane. Thank <laughs> you.